and welcome miss kira speaks we are back y'all let me gather myself center myself because when i tell you life has been kicking me in the pants and these doggone kids is testing my mf and gangster baby okay okay you know let me pull it together because that's not what we're here for what we are here for is another episode of marriage boot camp Hip Hop Edition, Season 18, Episode 2, Rap Battle. Now, this is tape number 357, because I tried to take this, tape this several times yesterday. But like I said, life, my phone, giving me issues. So it's day two. The topic of discussion, the focus of the day is resentment. We're going to go through this really, really, really quick so we can get to the meat and potatoes of the episode. So we see Treasure, Moni, and Tuff. And they're discussing how day one went. They're in kind of like a, they're in their rooms, but they kind of, I think they were in confessionals when they were talking to us. So after they say what they have to say, we go outside, we see the couples, they're continuing to discuss their concerns with each other. We have Molly talking to Neri about his issues with Treasure and her drinking. We have Brock and Amber, they're off to the side. They're having their conversation. She's worried that because of him, people are going to take her wrong. And what she said that stood out to me is she's like, she's not homophobic. And maybe you're not, but the, your words is kind of questionable. And I mean, if you don't want to be with somebody that's bisexual, you don't want to be with somebody that's bisexual. That's your business, but just know your words are questionable. So now we're in the kitchen and we're talking about Treasure's drinking and her insecurities. She had a conversation with Miles, Brock, whatever you want to call him. We're going to go back and forth. I may call him one. I may call him another. And literally in the conversation, she went from laughing to crying, like all in the same breath. He was so confused. And I'm like, I was trying to think of the word. I'm like, her emotions are... Is it unregulated? I can't, she's all over the place. Like, <sighs> child. So Judge and Dr. Ish, they're watching and she's drinking and she's talking and she's talking. And Dr. Ish talks to us about chemical coping skills. You know, that's one of the things she, she, she uses the drinking to cope with, you know, everyday issues. And that he and Judge, they're gonna keep a lookout. Um, they said that there's either a lot more or a lot less going on in the relationship that either one of them want to let on. And I would say a lot less. They're in a long distance relationship. So I don't even know if we're going to consider that much of a relationship at all, but we're here nonetheless. So the group gets called to the front driveway and the fun begins. We are here for what boot camp is all about. We have got our first exercise. So we've got buckets and we've got balls and the balls are separated into issues. Again, it's day two. So it's all about resentment. So each ball, um, the exercise by the way, is titled wanna be a baller. And each ball has an issue and there are some blank balls if they wanna write in what their issue is. So you're supposed to fill the bucket with um, resentment words or resentment balls and throw them at your partner. So, the words are infidelity, fame, anger, quality time, trust, money, past, sex, and social media. And they are here to purge. So, Dr. Ish tells us that the issue is a twist on progressive muscle relaxation. So, you relax your muscles so you can relax your mind. We start with Amber and Brock. Dr. Ish says that he is throwing a lot of past balls while Amber is throwing um, social media and infidelity. So Amber throws first and she's throwing anger. And as they're throwing the ball, they're supposed to tell us what their issue is, what their resentment is. So I'm just gonna try to move this through this as quickly as possible because I think I might've wrote down everything that they said what she's throwing at him. She's saying for being a control freak, for sleeping with men, for sleeping with a friend of mine. Then she says, 
Brock is for the streets. And being a social media whore. So now Fox steps up. He resents her for hitting him and screaming at him and busting the windows out his car on her Jasmine Sullivan-ish. Modi was in the background like, come on, yo. So for he continues for her flattening his tires, for making him feel insecure, cheating with hood and cheating in high school, sleeping with his best friend. Now, I don't know if maybe the two were one and the same, and he writes that he's ashamed. They are so toxic, y'all. They're so angry with each other, but they just cannot seem to let each other go for some reason. I don't know. Fix it, Jesus. So this is boot camp. So naturally, it doesn't end there. They have to put on plastic jumpsuits, put the balls inside, and carry all those resentment balls around with them all day. Man, I cannot be on this show. Knowing how it goes, I will be fronting so I would not have to carry all that weight. So Molly and Treasure are up. And, but let's not leave this out. Not before Treasure blurts out that out to Brock that Molly says he likes them balls. Really, Molly? Really, Treasure? So Molly starts with his BS. He's, he resents that she doesn't let him sleep when he's trying to get his rest. Um, is she crying because she's depressed or she because she's happy? And her drinking has to stop. I think that's the only three balls that we saw him, saw him throw. He might have thrown more, but these were his issues. Treasure resents his fame, his money that makes him think he can buy love, and him acting like her daddy. Then we have Nori and Neri. She resents him not helping with the kids. The world doesn't revolve around him. He's jealous of her hanging with her friends and not accepting that she made him dinner. <laughs> Nori said he resents her going to every event possible. He's like birthdays, christenings, bar mitzvahs, like he's naming them all. And for not participating in them having another baby. And Neri's like, we had the conversation, but I didn't know he was really serious about having another kid. And she's like, you know, she's raising three kids and he acts like he acts like he's the fourth. And she's like, she's not going to have another kid till she sees him improve. To which I say, amen, Neri. Amen. Don't be like these other women on the rest of Love and Hip Hop because they're on Love and Hip Hop too, Miami, which I have not watched, but we're not here for that show. Um, the girls be on there complaining that he doesn't help and then they keep having babies. So yes, Neri, stand your ground. Until he can help, there will be no more babies coming out of the baby factory. So last, we have Moni and Tuff. Tuff resents her for not letting him be the breadwinner. How could she stop you from being the breadwinner? Go be the breadwinner. I digress. For interfering with how he made money and changing it, allowing things that he did to allow something about how they did, to affect how they made money, I believe. So he blames Moni for his career not taking off. You couldn't do it by yourself, so because she didn't help you, you couldn't continue to try to help yourself and get further in your career and be what you wanted to be and be the breadwinner. That's on her, that's all on Moni. So it's Moni's turn and she resents him for the infidelity, for wanting to kindle their relationship and then continuing with the infidelity. And the whole time you're betraying her trust. So everyone is all suited up. They've got their plastic jumpsuits on with their balls inside. And this is for them to understand how their partner feels. Treasure is drinking and drinking and drinking. So she's laying down while everybody else is in the kitchen trying to get something to eat and they're talking. So Tuff says, you know, it's all in the past. And Moni's like, no, you haven't changed your behavior. As they're talking about cheating, checking DMs and checking phones and checking Twitter, um, Amber admits to checking Brock's phone when he's asleep. Toxic city, the two of them. Moni goes down memory lane and then Tuff starts to gaslighting like ish. Talking about Twitter and her sabotaging. Like, 
that she was going to look for it. You know, like you found something because you were looking. I found something because you were doing something, sir. So she calls him narcissistic and I intend, you know, I tend to agree. Moni says he can't be accountable and that blame does not belong on if she searched his name on Twitter, it belongs to him for doing the act. She ain't wrong. So Nori and Neri and Amber and Brock, they discuss the exercise and they talk about resentment. We see them in their rooms and they're just having conversations between themselves. Then it's time to head to the back, the back patio. It's time to turn it up. Nori says he knows what's up. He watches the shows. It's rap battle time. He is correct. Dr. Ish says it's time to clap back. Ja Rule. They'll write a defense to their partner's two biggest resentments and then they'll battle their partner on the stage. So Moni and Tuff are up first. Tuff goes first and you know he does well, not too bad. Moni follows and of course she kills it. Um, nothing that really stood out for theirs. Next it's Molly and Treasure. Molly does me. Treasure is up and her hook, I drink. I cry. I don't know why. I drink. I cry. I don't know why. That hook was everything. Everybody else there agreed. And um, that's treasure to a T. Um, Moni is, in fact, an empath. She says she knows. She knows how it feels. She wants treasure to know that she sees her and that she hears her. And that's very important. It is, Moni. So Amber and Brock are up. Brock goes, not bad. You want me to be real? You want me to be the real me or the fake me? He kind of puts in because, you know, Amber wants him to be what she wants him to be. So Amber goes, playing with my mind, boss up and be a boss, playing with my mind, got to boss up and be a boss. Okay. We hear you, Amber. But Amber needs to listen to, I think it was a judge that said, you got the answer, you just didn't like the answer you got. That's Amber. He's bisexual. Even if he's dating you and he loves you and he's focused on you, that doesn't stop him from being bisexual. So, I digress. Last is Nori and Neri. Neri, um, her rap is help, 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 help. They were all in there trying to get their hooks off, like, seriously. So, the, you know, she's like, husbands just don't understand. Um, and then Nori gets up there and he's like, we're your favorite couple's favorite couple. He says his little thing, you know, they're done. And Dr. Ish is like, um, he talks about the walkaway wife and the walkaway wife is a wife that will have an ask or a complaint for years, but the husband makes no changes. And then he is surprised one day when she announces she wants divorce. He says, Neri is a classic example, a classic example. And it's almost as if Nori thinks that she's never going to leave. And Dr. Ish says, you better think again. So it's their very first evaluation with Judge Toller. She says, you know, they wrote the boot camp theme theme song. I drink, I cry. No, she says, I cry and I don't know why. And help, 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 help. So she says, Amber and Brock came in rough and <laughs> raggedy. I hollered. Judge Toller is a whole hoot. So she says, you know, they need to fix what the real subject is. Um, she moves on to Moni and Tuff and they are being impaled on the pain of the past and they've got to get to the point of acceptance. She's concerned for treasure and she wants to talk to her sober. So she's going to hit her up first thing in the morning. Nori and Neri and she thinks Nori is thoughtful, but he says he watches the show, but he inserts himself too soon and he needs to hear her. She says, we repeat because we don't feel heard. Amen, judge. She always, like, she always has a word. Like, every season always has a word. So, Dr. Ish says the resentment can lose some of its destructive powers when you speak it, when you purge it. So, finally, it's time to get rid of the suits. Everybody's happy. They're back in the kitchen. Again, food got to nourish, nourish the body, nourish the soul. So Tuff says the, the battle lightened the mood, and it did. So Dr. Ish and Molly, they have a one-on-one, -on -one, and Molly complains about the room. And then he talks about hustling and sacrificing, and Molly is facing some legal issues that I guess I've been hiding under a rock because everybody else knew. 
I didn't know till we got on, I think the first episode of the show that he was like in some serious stuff. So Dr. Ish feels like he's putting all the blame on Treasure and in life, period, that he, you know, he has to take accountability. You can't, you know, blame her for everything in the relationship and in life, you know, consequences and repercussions. So Ish and Molly, um, as Ish and Molly talk, he says that he thinks Treasure will be able to receive what needs to be said better from the judge and Molly agrees because he says the only man that she respects is her father that's something to pay attention to that's the issue that'd probably come back up like I'm just you know waiting for it so Moni asked Treasure if she ate and as Treasure starts talking about her being socially awkward and so she's drinking to help her deal with the realities of life you know she's telling us in her confessional that she can receive from somebody like judge because she's a class act but she's you know she's real and down to earth indeed she definitely is so as she continues talking she gets up she's coughing and she throws up in the sink ew like i'd rather you throw up on the floor like gross like in the sink and neri was me she, I, like i can't be around people vomiting she's like mm, i'm gonna have to go because i'm gonna start throwing up myself but it was definitely, you know, her system trying to get rid of all those toxins. So Moni Love being the mama bear that she is, like she's making sure she's okay. Do you need more water? Do you need this? You know, fixing her hair, all of those things. She's correct. She's a total empath. So Molly comes in and Treasure tells him that she threw up and, you know, he respects her for talking about it and trying to figure it out, you know, work to get things better. So she was about to have a drink, I think. And everybody is like, girl, if you don't get you some water, like no matter what you do, the water's always going, you it's going to help you out, girl. So after everybody is gone, Neri is cleaning up. Like that's just like her motherly nature also. We clean up. So she's cleaning up and Nori actually helps her. And he's basically like, you know, he don't pick up after grown folks, but he, I guess, basically heard what she said. And I hope this is not just for the show, Dr. Ish gives us those same sentiments and he says that he hopes Nori is not a one-hit wonder. So Moni talked to Tuff about being baffled that she didn't help him with his career after the infidelity. She says it was about eight different women. She didn't say women, but I'm gonna say women. <laughs> Before and after she was pregnant and she doesn't want him to minimize, minimize it. And it's like, and what I did was bad, but you don't get your that like that like that's the type of stuff that tough was on um and they just continue to go back and forth and that's where we end because he feels like you know you're gonna stay in a relationship with me so you you know you're supposed to tough it out you're supposed to help me with the business aspect and everything like that and like i will be devil's advocate for a minute because i'm sure most therapists would agree like if you choose to stay in a relationship after this infidelity, you are supposed to forgive and you're not supposed to continuously rehash it over and over. Um, and her not helping him is kind of like a form of her not forgiving him. I kind of feel like I could be wrong, but I'm not a therapist. I'm just saying, I'm not saying I wouldn't have done what she did because you know, I'm a woman and you know, we're humans and we're imperfect, but like there is something to what, she, what he is saying also like i don't want to discount that like you're gonna stay then you're gonna hang me out to drive but um anywho this was an extra long recap i was hoping you to be a little shorter but um you know i'm just starting out with this show it's not getting many views but i'm gonna continue to view it for now because i i really enjoy the show um it's always a show i like i like getting that insight i like getting that that therapy um aspect because sometimes that's what's missing from these shows you have the drama and you have the beef and things like that but like where's the resolution like we don't want to carry all that in ourselves and not have any any type of balance so i'm gonna wrap it up because i'm just rambling a little bit um while you're here make sure you try and check out some of my other content thank you thank you before you go share like subscribe drop me a comment in the comment section and i appreciate you peace